everyday practices. Large shipments of disused electronics are shipped, often illegally, to countries outside the EU. It's illegal to ship electronic waste from Europe to non-OECD countries, low-income, middle-income country, most of them. But still, a lot of waste goes. This is followed by a cluttered process of disassembly, resale of parts, and large-scale dumping of residual junk. It's really affecting the health in a very direct way. Unhealthy, dangerous conditions, but also an opportunity to arrange things better. This is a big problem, but also it's giving a window of opportunities to work together to solve an issue. For the planet and for the people. This is the right time to bring out a policy that regulates this uh, market uh, of devices. Kao Stup Thapa's research is about transboundary movement of waste to the countries in the global south with a special focus on Nigeria. So we are trying to see what are the implications of this transboundary waste movement to the European ambition of circular economy. Because Europe may have rules in the field of waste, neatly carried out here in the Amsterdam Recycling Service Centre, they disappear from sight together with these ships. So from here in Amsterdam, you can see the, a lot of second-hand uh, electronic and electric items are shipped to Nigeria. But the problem is the functionality test is not done and the durability test is not done. In circular economy, repair and reuse is extremely important, but it has to be guaranteed that these second-hand products can be maintained for as long as possible and the value is added there. So this is the place where uh, export happens, basically. This kind of trade is quite ruthless, says Dr. Pauline Dotes, a professor of geography, geology and environment at the University of Hull. There's a, a temptation to find an illegal route and that's what's been happening on an international scale with waste plastics and electronics and cars and other things being transported out of Europe to find destinations where they're handled more cheaply, but that tends to mean without the same safeguards in place. When it comes to circular economy, the term close the loop is often used. But what does that mean in this context? So, so basically the circular economy wants to close the loop, uh, the production consumption cycle, also the waste cycle, it should be in a circle. But, but then a lot of waste is uh, just evaporates. So the waste is out of sight from the EU and it's out of mind. Kaustub focuses on countries such as China and Vietnam, and in particular on Nigeria, where he went himself to do research. Well, uh, Nigeria is one of the biggest destinations for secondhand electronic and electric items uh, from Europe, but also e-waste disguised in several different ways. There we saw this big market of second-hand electric and electronic items. A lot of the products uh, may not last too long. Maybe it's sold as second-hand items in Nigeria, but maybe in three months or six months or one year it becomes electronic waste. One of the people important to his research is Professor Olawale Olayida. Hello, Professor Wale. President of the Africa Circular Economy Research and Policy Network. And West Africa, just to say that West, West Africa is the hub of <laughs> electronic waste. Electronic uh, waste therefore constitutes a nuisance to the pool of waste that we already have uh, in the country and uh, in the continent. After the second-hand electronic and electrical products arrive at the port of Lagos, the working devices are traded and worthless parts are taken apart. In the process of trying to recover some of the uh, materials in, in the device or devices, they burn them and the pollution, the, the, the fumes from the burning sites is very hazardous. Right now in Nigeria, you see a lot of cables being burned to extract copper, but at the same time, when burning those cables, it creates a lot of toxic elements in the atmosphere and in human and people in the informal sector. So it's really affecting their health in a very direct way. So how can we as an international community in solidarity uh, kind of uh, tackle this problem? We need to better regulate and facilitate these twilight practices, says Olaida. 
and the producers can play a major role in this. What can, what can Europe do to make it more circular in terms of transboundary waste, do you think? Asking them to do at least one or two things. One is that they can set up uh, recycling stations in a country of import. The two is that they can have a way of buyback, okay, where you can easily uh, exchange the the old materials for new ones, because some of these equipment, they are new versions that are always there. And once you have the new version, the old version almost go into obsolete next and you will not be able to use them. So one of the things we can do is make sure that uh, non-functional items, uh, items, second-hand items that don't last too long are not shipped in the first place. And if they are shipped, make sure it's checked for functionality and durability in Europe and then only sent to Nigeria so that even the Nigerians who use this product can enjoy the product and make it last as long as possible, which is one of the aim of circular economy to maintain the use or the value of the product as much as possible. And the second part is what happens after the product finally becomes waste. The circular economy will have to be regulated in a different way to help countries outside the EU move forward, says Pauline Dotes. And that is exactly what the international cresting research is so important for. Uh, and so we need to look at that larger picture. And if you're going to do that, I think it's only reasonable to have partners who are based in those countries who are part of the project because they obviously have a much better understanding of the context of what's happening in there. Partners such as Professor Oleida, who believes that now is the time for international action in this area. So what I would advocate is to set for countries to be, uh, the producer to be responsible in terms of extended producer responsibility, to extend that to the country that is importing the uh, second-hand material and say that we're going to take up these materials and any waste that you see that has our name on it will be responsible for it. Professor Walter Vermolen supervises the research of these three PhD candidates. He sees an inconvenient truth in each of them. The inconvenient truth here is that we talk about circular, but there are multiple circles. And a part of the waste that is collected to be recycled, in the end, actually uh, moves to other countries, even outside Europe, into Africa, where there's no proper facility to actually uh, manage it. This means that European policies should actually uh, include fee structures where European producers uh, pay for the proper management of their uh, recycled materials in countries like Nigeria. In any case, these challenges also offer new opportunities. And to reinforce them, this academic has even more tools at his disposal. The next step for the research is to take this to a petition which is open to public so that public from all over the world can sign this petition. And then the next step for us is to take this petition to political leaders in Nigeria, in other parts of the world, to European Parliament and see, hey, this is a problem. And uh, there are some solutions identified by the local context, in the local context, and we want to make it actionable.